right, this video uh, is basically done by Brian Denlinger, which is Husky. Um, just sort of never really seen it before. I think I've seen this video. Um, there's just an awful lot of um, well, balancing a lot of scriptures and. Um, I suppose you got to rightly divide the water of truth, which dispensationalists say that they're able to do, but what he's actually saying here at this point in the video is that Paul is a physical Jew. Now Paul uh, was a was a Pharisee and um it wasn't until he met Christ that he was saved, he was born again and he reviewed his entire life, his entire religion when the Holy Spirit came to dwell with him after his baptism and he was actually taught the scriptures uh, through the Messiah the King of Kings which uh, is actually uh answer to prophecy Jeremiah 31, 33 no man shall teach his neighbor but God shall be there and this is why Jesus came the first time, he's Emmanuel, God with us, so it's the Spirit of God which uh, teaches us the, 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 the Scriptures. And of course, one of the biggest disputes in uh, the New Testament was about the physical circumcision. It's about the only major dispute, because when there was Gentiles coming into the faith, now this was, this was the Jewish faith in the Jewish Messiah, with which the early converts came into, which Paul taught about extensively um, about the, the holy days of God I'm sure he, he described many many different things that the Gentiles didn't really know about because they were accustomed to pagan practices like Easter and Christmas and things like that which well, it wasn't called Easter at that time it would be Ishtar you know just read Jeremiah 10 Israel even made Ishtar cakes <clears throat> which the pagans did the pagan nations around them this is why God rebuked them. So even though they were physical Jews, God rebuked them. God kicked them out of the land. Okay. And God makes it very, very clear that the only way you're going to be blessed, the only way you're going to be saved, the only way you're going to be right in right standing before God, whether you're Jewish or a Gentile, is if you are a spiritual Jew, if you're born again. That's the only way. Now, yes, there is scriptures which... Um, which uh, pertain to uh, the uh, part coming again of the Jewish people into the land which happened you know um, during Christ's day you know there was a part uh, relocation of the Jews in the land but only only in part it wasn't a full gathering of, of Israel it was just a part gathering just as it is now um, I think it's, it's definitely less than 10% of of Jews and uh, really those that are you know confessing the whole um, Jewish faith if you like I'm not talking about any form of Judaism but I'm talking about being a Bible believer um, which is which I believe the term Bible believer is not dispensationalist I believe that when you come into the faith according to what Paul, one of the key scriptures that Paul gave is Romans 3.31. Do we make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. Now, was he writing to Jews there? Was he writing to Gentiles? Or was he writing to the body of Christ who, were, who consisted of born-again Jews and born-again Gentiles, which the New Testament describes as the royal priesthood of the Messiah? which is prophesied in the Old Testament. Now, Paul does talk about carnal laws in Romans. There is carnal laws from the Torah, but there's also spiritual ones which we should keep. And uh, according to Hebrews 4, I think it may have been Paul that wrote that. Nobody really knows who wrote Hebrews. But he does talk about uh, the Sabbath day, that the Sabbath has not been changed. Um, I've heard Christians say well the 
the commandments for a, a Christian is, is just to uh, love God with all your heart, mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus said. Now he was summarizing the law and the prophets. He was summarizing the Ten Commandments and he was summarizing um, what, what the pro why the prophets were prophesying to Israel because of the blessings and curses which were within the covenant that God gave to Israel. And when you break these um, commandments, it means that curses come upon you. And that's why Paul taught that through faith in Yeshua the Messiah, um, it basically nullifies the curse of the law. It does away with the curse of the law. I've heard Christians try to teach that it does away with the law, faith in Christ, but it doesn't. It does away with the curses of the law. And therefore there's blessings which are attached to the commandments of God. And I'm not talking about the physical ones like physical circumcision, like uh, in particular certain physical things that, that we do that you know it's all about sort of churchianity and different things um, you know dedication you know all these are commandments of men they're not commandments of God and so this is why we must have a razor sharp discernment of the Word of God um, now what what I believe Brian is, is actually trying to say here and that he does teach on quite consistently is that the Jews are under a different covenant than the church different covenant than the church even though God and uh, you know um, some of the you know the prophets Hosea and, and different different other of the prophets said that God divorced Israel <laughs> divorced Israel a divorce means that you cannot remarry uh, someone who's divorced even though Benny Hinn did it but you know he's not a real Christian you know he whatever he is he's not he's not a, a real believer in the true Messiah because he's um, you know, you, you tell a tree by its fruit, and when people are breaking God's commandments, then you look at that tree and you say, well, I, I don't really care what you're saying, if you're physical or spiritual or whatever you're trying to say, but I can see that the fruit, the fruit of what you produce is not in keeping with uh, the commandments of God, and therefore you cannot be, be of God. It's as simple as that. You know a tree by its fruit. That's what Jesus said. Um... And so, yes, he goes ahead and quotes um, from the Church of Laodicea, which God promises to deliver that congregation, if you like. You know, the word church can be quite confusing because people associate it with Gentile Christianity, but that's not what our church is. It's consisted of physical Jews who are born again and physical Gentiles who are born again. That's what the church is. There's one new man in Christ. And... What Brian tends to teach, or put you in the picture of, is that there's actually, uh, well, there's two different ones now. You know, God is just going to going to uh, rapture the church at some point, which I agree that He will. But who's who's it going to rapture, and who is the church? That that's the real question. That's the real question that people miss. Um, because whatever church you're going to, you know, it's assumed that your pastor is teaching the right thing, or he's teaching the commandments. Most of the churches out there are not teaching God's commandments. Why is that? Why is that? Jesus says, those who love me keep my commandments. That's fine. Well, they try and quote Christ, uh, you know, when he He gave, you know, the summary of the law and the prophets. And they say, well, loving, loving one another is, uh, you know, all we need to do. And then, so, so they do this by wearing short dresses, the women. Uh, you know, the men do this by uh, tithing as much money as they can. The more money, the more love, as, as I've heard it said oftentimes. Just show me this, the scripture in verse for that. So it just seems that the church is, is very disconnected with how to truly love God and, and each other. There's very few congregations which, for example, do feet washing, which Jesus commanded his followers to do, which, which I've done in some, in some cases. But that's only just a physical expression of um, the fact, yes, I'm, I'm ready to serve you as a believer. I'm ready to put you first. Um, I'm ready to treat you well. Um, and that's just a sort of an outward expression of that. 
you know, uh, I think it was Peter who was disgusted with Christ, said, oh, there's no way you're going to wash my feet, Lord, you're my king, you're my Lord, there's no way. And and Jesus says, well, unless I wash your feet, you, you, you're going to have no part of my kingdom. I think it was Peter that says, oh, wash, you know, wash, <laughs> give me an entire bath if you want, man, if that's the case. But, uh, now, the Church of Philadelphia, the attributes of the Church of Philadelphia was they were keeping the commandments of God, as we read in the book of Revelation. Um, it says, those who overcome Satan, overcome him with the, the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of their mouth. And it also says, on occasion, they are those who keep the commandments of God. Now, are, are we to say it's, it's those who keep the commandments of Paul? just the ones that Paul quoted maybe just, just the ones in the different epistles that Paul said he highlighted you know not to eat blood not to eat food sacrificed to idols which Christians do regularly every every week they will eat black pudding in certain, which, which is pig's blood or they will have uh, their ham sandwiches That's, you know, I guess Paul didn't mention that right but do you think Paul and the apostles had a ham sandwich you know is, is it a big deal? Will you tell me? Is it a big deal to God? You know, why, why did the prophets mention it? Why did Isaiah mention it? Why, why does the Bible mention about clean and unclean? And the fact that if you're a believer in Christ, you're now clean. You're now a clean vessel for God because the blood of the Lamb has cleansed you of all sin. What well, if you're Jewish? What about all the curses that God gave unto Judah and unto Israel, even divorced Israel? What well, if you're one of the lost tribes of Israel and you come into faith whereby the testator has died and given his life and risen again in order that he might marry the bride again? And, the, and Jesus said, I have not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Think about this, man. Now, if you're not of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and you're going to a Gentile church and you're just plucking out little things that are nice and fluffy and that are, that are sort of, uh, well, I'm going to keep that, I'm going to reject that, I'm going to keep this. You're in very, very shaky ground. And I don't believe that that type of believer or Christian, if you like, Christian being a follower of the Jewish Messiah, is actually um, going to be part of the Church of Philadelphia. Why? Because they're not obeying the Great Commission by preaching the word to the Jews then the Gentile they're not leading by example they're not taking to heart the word of God seriously enough um, in order to, to live their life in a correct manner in order to um, show that they're bringing forth the fruit that God is looking for which is um, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and through Romans 3.31 through faith in Christ we establish the commandments of God establish the law <clears throat> which is written as the law, it's the Torah, it's the whole entire, um, when it says law, you're talking about the first five books of the Bible. Now, if you reject the law, if you say, well, I'm saved by grace, not through the law, I'm saved by grace, not through the law, but that doesn't mean to say the law's done away. You see? <laughs> you it's not one or the other, it's both. You know, you're saved by grace, when, when you repent, when you give your life to God, Jesus comes in and saves you, saves your soul. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. But what, what in fact happens is that, um, just as Jeremiah prophesied, that when the Holy Spirit comes, he, he writes the commandments of God on the hearts and minds through the Spirit of God. You're going to know that it's wrong to lie because the Holy Spirit will remind you if you lie and he'll rebuke you. You'll feel it. The Holy Spirit, if he's in you, You'll feel you'll feel a rebuke <laughs> if you're if you're sitting down um, to eggs and bacon and black pudding on a Sunday morning as I as I used to do when I when I was brought I, I was not brought up in a Jewish home but I really I had a repulsion for it um, with, with it within my soul I knew it wasn't good and when I found out that it was actually black pudding was pig's blood I was shocked I was like why why are we having this. And I had given my life to Christ at that time. I, I had repented. I had given my life to Christ when I was about 15, 16. And when I learned what we're eating, um, I was really repulsed by it. Obviously stopped eating black pudding. And then later on, I prayed about giving up uh, bacon. 
and I just found that you know pepper it's, it's in everything ham pepperoni bacon you know pe um you know pig's flesh is in a lot of a lot of different things and so I prayed about it and the Lord really showed me that they they, they ate during uh, Mithras which we call Christ mass and they sacrificed a pig and uh, they got fat and revelry and, and drunk alcohol and had sexual orgies and ate pig's flesh um, and, and I'm thinking well this has nothing to do with my Messiah the Jewish Messiah so I'm, I'm going to stop doing that I'm going to stop celebrating the, also the pagan feasts as well which I don't readily see um, Brian or any hardly anyone else out there on YouTube specify now if you want to be church the church of um, Philadelphia which, which is the church that is the church of brotherly love the church that's leading by example the church that is walking hand in hand with Christ through persecution and uh, are able to love each other and are able to lead by example and even love those that um, are rejecting them that are calling them names uh, that even might go to the extreme to call them Judaizers which we're not because we're not going around wearing keepers because it's not biblical we're not walking around uh, <clears throat> you know all, always wearing tzitzi although it's yeah you can wear it if you want it's, it's just an option we're not walking around saying that you got to be physically circumcised because this was how biblically in the New Testament that you're, you're referred to as a Judaizer if you if you preach the physical circumcision you're referred to as a Judaizer <clears throat> which I do not preach that I say well look any physical part of the law which Paul was speaking about is not needed for salvation it's faith in Christ that's needed now anything you choose to do after that as, as an outward show of your faith if you wear tzitzi me personally I don't wear a kippa I hardly ever wear tzitzi <laughs> unless I'm invited to like a Passover seder or something like that um, is it wrong to do it I don't believe it's wrong but you know is it wrong to circumcise your, your child then you know on the 8th day I don't believe it's wrong no but I wouldn't say that you have to do it in order to to be in the covenant, you know, um, because that's what the the Jews were saying that you had to do these things to be in the covenant. And um, the apostles prayed about it. Peter got the vision about the un, um, the unclean animals, <clears throat> and God telling him to kill and eat. But this what this is while he was praying. Should I baptize? the Italian jailer, the Roman jailer and he was shown yes to do it because don't um, call what God has made clean unclean and because this was a reference to the fact that the Jews never socialized with the Gentiles certainly didn't preach the gospel to the Gentiles up until that, that vision that Peter had and then they went ahead and shared the good news of Yeshua with them and they were baptized and so according to Paul's writings according to the scripture this makes this Roman jailer a spiritual Jew this means that in repenting and accepting the Jewish Messiah and receiving the Holy Spirit maybe speaking in tongues maybe in the Lord Yeshua imparting some spiritual gift to them it means that they are now part of the royal priesthood of the Messiah now we don't know if that Roman jailer was was um, was a very old um, you know one of the lost tribes of Israel. We we, we don't know that, but we know that God <clears throat> showed them to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Jesus said, "I can make sons of Abraham out the the stones of the ground." And so, oftentimes I think when a Gentile gets saved and they pray and ask God you know if they're part of Israel if they're part of a lost tribe sometimes God reveals and and it takes time you know a, a lot of people that I've spoken to strangely I, I might have asked them that I might have encouraged them maybe to pray about that and, and I'm not convinced that hardly anyone has actually heard from God um, 
and I, I'm not going to I'm not going to say why the reason is because I've tested the spirits in certain people. I'm not going to divulge how I how I uh, learn of 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 that. But um, there's just a, a certain thing that they say that tells me that they've not asked God, and that um, they're being flippant. They're being assump assumptive. Um, and uh, they've, they've probably not given their lives fully to Jesus Christ, even though they might have done things outwardly. They might have professed a faith in, a faith in Christ. I was speaking to someone the other day that said they were a flat earther. Um, it was a Christian that was in contact with us in this area. He said he was a flat earther. Um, he was he was sort of talking about the flat earth. Uh, this This chap that he knew picked it up, started running with it, the guy wasn't even a Christian, but apparently became a Christian, and now he's preaching against. Um, he's actually preaching against the uh, the doctrine of the the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's he's saying that you know Jesus is the Father, and Jesus is also the Spirit of God. You know, there's there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit. There's no such thing as God the Father. There's just God, and that's it. And <laughs> nothing outside that. Which, which best, best of luck with that. How to describe to get saved? Then you know, if 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 God is just one being and nothing else, there's no essence of God. There is no, um, what would you say, Father or Son, as the Bible does does testify to, because that's what the apostles testified to. You know, you are Yeshua. You're the Son of God. You know, you're the King of Israel. You're the Messiah. That was the confession of faith that Peter gave and the other apostles gave. I suppose you'd have to just rub out um, you are the son of God just delete that from from scripture now because people are trying to say that uh, it's just what God is just one being and that's it and there's no such thing as the Holy Spirit which the Sadducees actually taught it's a Sadduceic doctrine because they were sad you see um, the doctrine of the Sadducees wasn't correct um, the Pharisaic doctrine was mostly correct, but they were hypocrites. That was a problem that Jesus had with the Pharisees. It wasn't because they were teaching the wrong thing. It was because they, they weren't living the correct way. Just like many Christians today. So, in, in fact, you, you could argue that the Pharisees were hyper-grace. The Pharisees were pretty much hyper-grace. And, you know, to get in their elite little crowd, you know, you had to do things and teach things the way they did. But then... You know, the way they're living their lives is, uh, you know, watching pornography. Maybe they're eating unclean things. Maybe they are having sex outside of a biblical marriage. And I say a biblical marriage because I believe a biblical marriage covenant is different from a marriage contract, which we seem to, seem to enter into willy-nilly these days without thinking about if it's biblical or not. But... Uh, yeah. So so the point going back um to the person that I met the other day was, you know, the flat earther. Um he actually repented the he actually said, Lord, there's not enough evidence of this and um he stopped believing in the flat earth <clears throat> because his friend um started saying that um, you know, there's no Trinity, there's no Father, Son and Holy Spirit and he he began just to say, Well, I'm not really sure if this guy is really converted. So, uh, you know, oftentimes ideas um, can bring us to, to question if there is a God and, you know, we start to run with different things. But I think to be really rooted and established in the faith, you, you, you really have to receive the Holy Spirit with, with power. Um, and you, you have to allow the Spirit of God to sort of brood over you, to sort of examine you, um, for you to really get to know the Messiah because I don't think Paul even preached for several years after he was saved <clears throat> and I see people these days thinking they can get fast tracked there's no such thing as getting fast tracked you cannot get fast tracked when, when when you plant something you got to make sure it's the holes nice and deep you know it's got a uh, lovely rich soil around it um, things that the, 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 the plant can feed from it's nicely watered and it's in a nice little spot, you know, it's not too waterlogged or whatever. See, that's that's the good soil <clears throat> that Jesus was talking about. 
and it takes time to dig that hole to, to put that seed in if you like and, and to cover it over and wait for that seed to grow it's not going to happen in a year it's not going to happen in two years three, four, five years it says even once a fruit tree has grown and it produces fruit you're not meant to pluck the fruit I think until about the third year so all, all these things yes I believe that there's a lot of spiritual lessons we can learn from the Torah from the law that actually relate to our spiritual walk with God and it's very sad that a lot of the church or even most of the church reject reject the law and, and look at you as if you got horns when, when you actually say no um, I, I definitely know I received the Spirit of God um, and it's through faith in the Messiah that I walk um, according to God's commandments which Paul, yes Paul quoted yes Peter quoted but they're written there for us now we're spoiled rotten these days because we can refer to any part of the the word of God that we like <clears throat> now I think um, what you really must grasp here is the fact that what I am saying is what Jesus is saying and so if you want to rebuke me I'll quote my Lord Jesus Christ and when I stand before him um, you'll ask me well have you taught anything else that I've taught and I'll say no because I've just quoted you and, that's, and, I, and I think the Lord will be happy with that you might not think so but I think he will why? because the Bible itself aligns up with what Jesus taught and said let me explain that now when Jesus said I've come not but for the lost sheep of Israel and we read the book of Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14 we actually read that the 144,000 are not Jehovah Witnesses are not some part of some evangelical church or some crap like that but they're actually um, 12,000 from each of the lost tribes of Israel but they're not lost anymore because they are actually born again saints which it seems to be that they're living at that time and this is what the whole tribulation thing is all about is, is to when these people are actually raptured it says to stand in the Mount of Olives when the Lord Jesus Christ returns so a lot of people think that oh see the church will get raptured and then the church is going to come with Jesus and then yeah we'll just meet these other anointed Jews these 144,000 Jews and we'll all just go out and that's not what the Bible teaches the Bible teaches that the church is these lost tribes of Israel the Bible teaches that many are called many are called to faith in Christ the gospel is preached to perhaps billions of people several billions and billions of people over the past millennia but um, many are called but few are chosen there comes a point in your walk with Christ that your fruit is going to be tested that God is going to look at your life and say is he teaching and doing the things of God which bring glory to my name Jesus says those who teach and who do the commandments of God are called great in the kingdom of God those who at least try to teach them as the Pharisees but don't actually keep them they are called least least in the kingdom of God in fact it's very questionable whether the least in the kingdom are going to be actually in the kingdom when Jesus comes back you know I wouldn't like to throw my future to the wind or you know uh, that type of thing but I got to practice what I preach if I believe that through faith in Yeshua that God the Holy Spirit teaches us how to keep his commandments that's how I'm going to live I am going to live how the Bible predicted that God would take away his flock from the mouths of the false shepherds because the false shepherds are making um, dinner. They, you know, they're making uh, what would you call it? Um, merchandise, if you like. I think Paul used that word. But it says in the book of Zechariah, 
that the, the true shepherd takes um, his sheep out of the false shepherds mouths in other words you you go and tie to these false churches you you keep a lot of these pastors are fat with your tithe money a lot of them have got big fat bellies most of them don't know how to fast most of them take scripture out of context most of them hate God's commandments hate God's commandments get your mind around that and they're calling themselves Christian and they're having black puddings on a Sunday and uh, they are allowing their wives to wear short dresses and etc 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 there's no fruit in there that's showing God that these people are actual real Christians many are called but few are chosen and so I will stick to what the Bible teaches I will stick to what Jesus said I will stick to what the book of Revelation teaches and I'm not going to speculate um, wh where this mystery church is just going to be taken up in the air at some point I, I believe in the rapture and as Jesus said in his book of Acts said um, that Jesus will come back the same way as he left in other words he is coming from the clouds the last thing he said to the Pharisees the next time you see me I will be coming in the clouds with the heavenly angels to judge the earth and at that point the Pharisees were mad they were oh they crucify him even though they were really doing God's will the only one that was lost out of that was Judas I believe that the Pharisees had a chance to repent I believe that some of them did repent after this event remember the two of the Pharisees prophesied that because of one man's sin death entered into the world and because of one man's sacrifice that that blood is going to um, save Israel and that all of Israel would be saved in number How, you know what that means what, what does that mean exactly it means that every part and every representation of who Israel is is going to be saved in other words the tribe of Reuben um, the, the tribe of Gad the tribe of Manasseh the tribe of Judah um, the tribe of Levi also I believe is mentioned in, in Revelation which is very interesting very interesting indeed and the tribe of Joseph is also mentioned which uh, you have to go to the book of Ezekiel to see God joining um, I think it's the stick of Ephraim and the, and the stick of Joseph together which uh, many people say that they're from the tribe of Ephraim in the last days Ephraim isn't mentioned in the book of Revelation sadly so I, I kind of laugh at that when, when they say ah, I'm, of, I'm of the tribe of Ephraim like, I'm like who cares because they're not mentioned in <laughs> Revelation 7 but you know they were one of the, the, the tribes who led astray Israel um, as well as the tribe of Dan they're also not mentioned in the book of Revelation because well there's a lot of videos made about the the fake Jews in the tribe of Dan which will make another day but um, see a lot of people claim to be physical Jews um, big deal it's not a racial thing some some people they, they claim that the you know you got to be black or you got to be African or you got to be um, Ashkenazi or you got to be Sephardic you know and they'll make claims people are great at making claims but the New Testament is really saying God is truly saying I do not care are you born again are you living according to the commandments of the Most High God do you have the Spirit of God living inside of you are you a Bible believer who cares if you're dispensationalist or not who cares do you believe that Yeshua died for your sin do you believe that when you're saved that God writes his commandments on your heart and mind and writes his name on your right hand and forehead do you believe that maybe maybe you do maybe you don't the point is um, you have to repent in order to get to get saved and what does that mean stop going in the direction you're going and confess your sin that you're a sinner to the Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua that he died for your sin you rose on the third day and that you believe on who he is he's the son of the, the living God the son of Yahweh the father 
who brought his son forth from the seed of a woman, which that prophecy goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. You know, the seed of the woman, which, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that, but the Antichrist is, is, is trying to replicate all these prophecies today. See, the real question, my friends, isn't if this guy is a Jew, or if this guy is a Gentile, or if this guy is a true Jew, or if this guy is a, I don't know, what well, he is, <laughs> from the, one of the lost tribes of Israel. If this guy, you know, has bacon sandwiches every day, if this guy is an Ashkenazi Jew, or he's like a government agent, that's not the question. That is not the question. The question is, are they born again? The question is, are they producing the fruit according to the kingdom, the commandments of God, are they living? and teaching the commandments of God, any of these people, any of these people here. Is the names of false gods coming out their mouths? Are they proclaiming false covenants which are not even in the Bible? Like a Saturn's Day Sabbath is not even, it's not even Jewish, my friends, it's not even in the Bible. It's nowhere to be found in the Bible. And yet people think, ah, oh, you're Jewish if you keep a Saturday Sabbath. It's not biblical to keep a Saturday Sabbath. It's not biblical to keep a Sunday Sabbath. It's not biblical to keep any day which is not written in the Bible. The, the Bible talks about new moons and Sabbath days. How many, how many do you think are called? How many are chosen? How many are ready to do the things that God wants? That's the question. And if you are, then I think there's a chance you could be raptured. You could. There's a chance you could be part of this um, um, Philadelphian church in the last days who are truly in love with their Messiah, who, who truly want to please their Messiah, and who also have love to share with each other, and even for the lost world, have, have enough oil left over to, to show love to the lost world through um, being utterly hated and rejected by the lost world. And yet... God loved the world enough to give his only begotten son that those who believe in him should not perish should have everlasting life eternal life 